Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit, and I'm going to be showing you... <coughs> Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit, and today I'm going to be showing you how to loom knit a basic cowl using the... Um, just the regular round loom. I mean, this is the big one that, you know, fits over the head. And I'm going to be um, using the Karen Cakes, which is, you know, this is the one that I'm going to be using because so it will match the scarf and the hat that I already have. So this is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. And you can, I don't know if you can see a little bit how it gets fuzzy. But it is a hand wash, or lay flat to dry, and it's a, a medium size four. Now, for the hook size, I mean, it says if you're going to use needles, you use a US 8. And for a crochet hook, it's a US H. But since we are loom knitting, they're really, I mean, you can have different size looms if you want different, like a tighter, you know, knit and whatnot. Um, these, I just use the standard one. This one I bought at Michael's. It's got the flat um, head that I like so that it's easy to for the the yarn to go over when I'm trying to um you know make each stitch so and so you know Mike or Walmart sells these as well I have one that I bought in Mexico that actually looks identical to this it's just does not have this tiny little piece right here that's my anchor peg for when I first get started but you can always use anything else for an anchor peg if you need to and with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. As you can see, I also have a just a, a small little lap blanket that I made for myself using one of my um, flat looms. I didn't quite make it wide enough. You know, I could stretch it a little bit and it probably would be wide enough. But it's perfect for what I need it for, which is just to sit here and cover my feet. But So we're going to start with, we have my yarn. Now, yeah, it does come in a cake. Where so it's already you know set up as we want, but this when I had made my hat and my scarf, I had was um, I guess the word is color, or the phrase is color control, so I had balled off some of the yarn while I, so I could finish my scarf and follow the and follow the pattern of the yarn. So I took this since I have my lovely little winder, I took this and wound it up because you know I'm just obsessed with that thing now. So I'm gonna start with. Again, you know, you have the, it will, there, they just, this is the one that comes with the Infinity Loom that Michael sells, uh, a, a hard plastic straw, because that's basically what it is, or the barrel of an, of a stick pen, like a big ink pen, works just as fine, just as well. So, and this plastic piece Works really great for helping me keep the tension even. Plus, it makes it, it you could, it's a lot easier to uh, thread the yarn or, yeah, around the pegs. So. Okay. And when I start, because if you start with your normal E wrap, then the cowl is going to roll at the ends, and some people like that. I don't. If if you like the rolled look, you would go straight into e wrapping like you're going to make a hat. But since I want, um, I don't. I want it to lay flat. Now I will e wrap the initial just to get it around the pegs. Again, making sure because you can see that they are doubled, and you can't really see in the back. Where, you know, the crossover is in the back of the peg, not the front. And I'm sorry if that's not that clear. I'm kind of filming at an odd angle here. I'll just...
Okay, now that I'm back over here, instead of wrapping again right now, we're just going to do, hold the yarn, where the, at. get my stuff organized here, the yarn, the working strap part of the yarn goes on top, above the loop, and so you'll take your hook, go under the loop, you know, come from, from bottom, go up, grab the top loop, pull it down, and I'll show you again how I do that, is I just take it in, and to where it's laying like that, and then just swivel, swivel the needle, the hook, and you can pull it through. So now once I have that loop, I'll pull up, pull the whole thing off, and then the part that's on, uh, that's on my hook right here, I think that's out of focus, goes, but it goes on the peg. So see, oh, go up again closer here, go from the bottom, over. Just one second, I'm going to adjust the camera. My camera stopped for some reason. Sorry about that. So I keep the what I've already done at the top so, because I know that the next time I come to this peg, the yarn goes below it. And when it's down here, the, the looped yarn, I know that the working yarn goes above it. And that's how I would keep track if I have to stop in the middle of a round. And this, if you are, if you use the loom at, you know, very much, then, you know, you're already, you know, you're going to already be aware of how to make a cowl. I'm not doing any fancy stitches. This is just the basic. This is for people that have never done this before, that need to know how to do the stockinette stitch on a loom or garter stitch. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's a stockinette. And... Actually, anyway, he needs to know how to do the stitch that where you could, where it lays flat and doesn't roll. And it works as a great headband. If you ever need to just make just a headband. And then if anyone needs, a, you know, a refresher on, you know, the basic how to do the hats. Because once you get past the the end cuff, or you know, the beginning and the end cuff, then the middle part of the hat is just like, or the middle part of the cowl is just like making a hat on a round loom. Oh, I split my yarn there. Let's get that fixed. And I'm almost done with this round.
Okay, so now that we are back to the starting peg, this time we're going to go, the working yarn goes below the loops. So there's the loop and then the working yarn. So you'll take the hook and you'll go from the top down and rotate it and pull it over. And it's just the same, it's, I was about to say, it's just the same as we just did except opposite. Which I know is not really just the same. Now this one you will have to remember to push down. But it's it's the same in theory, you know. Instead of going from the bottom up, you go from the top down. And we'll work all the way around this. Catch that real quick. Now, if you wanted, you could always, you know, basically knit two, purl two, and make it ribbed. Instead of a solid, you know, kind of garter stitch around or the solid stitch around, if you wanted to give it more of a textured look. Now, I know that there are, if you go on, you know, you know, you're on YouTube watching this, but if you search, you know, just for loom knitting, there are so many people out there that have so many, you know, wonderful stitches. There's a lot of things that you can do with loom knitting that I've never done. I have done just the basic stitches, you know, and learned to make a basic hat, basic scarf, you know, blanket, cowl, just at is what how it got started and then I learned how to knit and crochet with you know to needle knit and then to crochet and that's just where I've focused most of my energy since then. But I do like coming back and working with the looms ever you know ever so often. Now these two rows, I repeat, you know, alternating, you know, from top down, you know, or from the bottom, sorry, from going from the bottom up and the top down on the hook, which you could, it doesn't matter which one of the two you start with. I just usually start with the working yarn above it because that's just where my, because of the E-wrap or where, it, you know, the yarn is when you first wrap it on. But you're going to alternate these two rows until the, Cuff is as long as you want it to be. I generally do 10 rows, depending on the yarn, 10 rows generally gives me about an inch. So that'd be 
it would end up being, you know, five sets of two. And that generally gives me as long as I want it for the cowl. But again, the brim, the, or sorry, the cuff length is going to be up to you with, you know, however long you want. So now that I'm back at the beginning, I start with back, you know, where the working yarn is on the top. So, and I am going to put you on pause and I will catch up with you when I'm just about done with my cuff. Okay, here I am. I've got just a couple more pegs to go through. Get my last two done. And a little miss, I can't throw the ball if you don't actually bring it to me. My cat likes to play fetch. Little miss, no name. Yes, you are. She's called Little Miss No Name because when I found her, I couldn't come up with a name. And the vet had her in their... They had to put a name for her in the records, and so she was TBD, or, you know, to be determined... And that was her name for the longest time, and I just couldn't come up with it, and I couldn't come up with the name. I wanted to, I found her in my mailbox, and so I wanted to, because I had a mailbox that sat on the ground, and we're pack, we put packages in. And I wanted to name her something, like, related to mailboxes or post office or something like that, and couldn't think of anything I liked. And Little Miss No Name, I started calling her Little Miss, and Little Miss No Name as a joke, and it just stuck. But anyway, I've made it all the way around, so we're at the point where we switch to traditional, just e-wrap. Um, now, if you know fancy stitches and you'd rather do those, you can do that. You know, do, th this point, it's whatever you want on the stitches. But we're doing just, I'm doing just the basic, so it'll look just like a knit stitch, where you wrap it around. And now when you do it, you're making sure that you only have, you only see that this um, yarn, cross over once here well when you, you have the bottom one there there as opposed to on the back you see where it's crossing over like twice you know one and then two and that way you just want to make sure because other um that you're wrapping correctly and so i just and this is where the little tension rod comes in handy and I can go through a lot quicker with it than I can with my finger. You know, just doing it by, you know, holding it like this takes me a lot longer. Plus, this lets me keep my tension nice and even. I do the way I'm holding it, is I'm kind of pinching it with my hand against the tip of the tension rod or plastic straw. And, um... It keeps the, it just helps keep the even tension on it. Okay. Oh, do, 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 do. And then when I'm done looping up with, I will loop it on the the first one that I did, just a couple, just to hold it. And then we take the bottom and we flip it over. Bottom loop, flip it over the top. Just like if you're making, if you use the round loom to make a hat or a scarf. And like I said, you know, I need to learn some of the, the fancier stitches that people do. I've seen people do amazing things with looms. I just do the basic things. Hats, knit, scarves, whatnot. Um, so, we go all the way around on here.
Okay, and then I'm going to pull what I tie, wrapped extra around this one just to hold it in place. I'll take the extra off to where it's just down to the two loops. Flip it over the top. Now, if I were to keep starting and stopping my rounds at the same spot every time, I'm going to get what's called a ladder effect. There's going to be one row going up that's wider and it looks ugly. It's like having a run in your in pantyhose or something. So what I do to avoid that is I will just do a partial row, just wrap, you know, e-wrap a couple pegs, and then instead of starting here, I start from this end. Though. This first one will be tight, and then the rest of them will be fine. And now my row will start from here instead of back here. Then we're just flipping over, just bottom loop over the top loop, all the way back around. What you do? Oh, this is Max. Hi, Max. Max does not like kisses. See. He is also good at sneakily chewing my yarn in half. Sometimes not so sneakily. So I have to watch it when he gets on my lap. Ah, oh, watch out. He plays fetch as well, and I think he's the one that taught Little Miss how to play fetch. But he tends to only play fetch with a particular type of ball. It's those sparkly balls that you get from that I get from PetSmart. Okay, and I finished that round. So now I am going back to just doing a handful. Work not a full round, just a handful. Just so I can have a different starting point. Now, I will do a full circle. Now, if you forget to alter your starting point, you know, for a couple rounds in a row, it's not going to be a big deal. It's when you do, you know, four or five or more rounds without altering it that it starts being noticeable. So, I just find it easier to every other one, you know, I... Or every other round on here, because I'll, oh, I'll do a full round and then a partial, then a full round, then a partial. That's what I was trying to say. I went to water aerobics this morning, and water aerobics kicks my tail every time. It's a good workout, but oh, it leaves me brain dead. So this is what we do basically until you get to the length that you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working on this and I will check back in with you guys after I've made some progress on this. As you can see, you know, I've, I've made quite a bit of progress with it. Now this is going to be, because I'm only using one strand of yarn instead of two, this is going to be a bit of a thinner cowl. 
Now I could always fold it in and make it a double knit that way, um, but because we've got the this particular hem, I'm not going to want to do this. My this will still be a lot warmer than what it looks like it will be, um, but I my plan with this, what I'm going to use this for is, you know, I will, I have a hat that, and a scarf that is made out of the same yarn. So I will be pairing this with the hat to kind of just extend the, you know, coverage of the hat and just work and use it in place of a scarf. So. so I am just going to sit here and keep working on it. And I will check back in with you guys when I am ready to start on the hem. Well, I have finished my length and let's see. I have it. Roughly 15 inches. Um, that not counting the band. So it'll be about 17 inches long-ish um, once we've got the bands done, because the band's about an inch. So what, again, what we're starting on here is I, um, to do the stitch, we're doing one row where the yarn is a, above. You'll do one full row of that, and then you'll do one row. I'm not going to actually do it because I'm not on where you're coming at the yarn from below. If you need a refresher on the hem, you can go back to the beginning of the video where I started this because it's the same exact um, garter stitch that we did here we're doing um, to, to finish the other band. And so I will check back with you when I have mine completely done or ready to cast off and we'll go through the cast off. Okay, so I have my a border finished my edge so what I'm ready to do now is to do the stretchy bind off and I've heard this used um either phrase as a stretchy bind off or as the slip knot method um I kind of like slip knot just because I like the group but anyway you take here's your the working strand I want to see if I can get this a little bit closer without my hand and you're gonna I'm gonna you're gonna place it between um the neck make a sorry place it between the two pegs and when I bind off I'm going this direction so if you use the loom nick in the other direction then you would be going that way with it but since I work counterclockwise no I work clockwise then I'll go this direction so you take it through there and you reach under the loop that's already on the peg and pull the working yarn through and then so you have this loop now just do it again so you can see what I did so we pull it through that way so we just have it wrapped over and cut take your hook from the bottom and pull it down through and pull up the loop and instead, we're not pulling it off that way. We're taking, this is the working strand. Take it and you pull it through just like, like you're making your slip knot when you're very first starting. And so then you'll take, and you don't, you don't need to pull it super tight. Just pull it where it's close to the peg. And then leave this over. And then pick up the bottom loop that's already on the peg. And grab just the bottom part of, of the loop. You don't need both strands of it, just the one part. Pull it up through like that. And then pull through like this. And we're going to keep doing all the way around. And I'm not, when I pull this back, when I pull this part, I'm not tightening it super tight to the peg. I'm just making this straw, um, smaller just so that it's not, doesn't get super long and get in my way. Get rid of that. See if I can hold this with my knees. That will hold it. 
I don't have an overhead camera setup other than my gooseneck arm and it doesn't always work great. I have taken my time getting this done, although it's funny, as you'll see here in a minute, that I am wearing the same shirt that I was when I worked on this several weeks ago or a month or so ago. It just happened to be that way. It's not that I wear the same shirt every day. Okay, and now I am at, <coughs> excuse me, the last peg. So, go ahead and do the same way. Make the loop. And then, you're going to make one more through there. Go ahead and cut the yarn. Cut the yarn. I'll use my little yarn pendant. And then just pull the yarn through like that. And now from here, all we need to do is just go ahead and pull it, pop the loops off the pegs. go and all we've got left to do now is to weave in this last little piece and 
And because I see that little, there's a little bit of a gap right there. When I do it, I will just kind of stick it through that end piece. I'll show you here in just a minute. Is I'll just, oops, drop my needle there. I'll just stick it through two loops there. And then what I do from here is I just will run it at the center of, in between the stitches, because it makes like little paths right there that's just easily, you can run through them to where it doesn't show on either side. It's just perfect little yarn tunnels. And then just trim off the tail end piece. And we have it finished. Pause the camera for just a minute. I'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay. So here we are. We have the act, you know, the finished piece. And so, we'll take my glasses off real quick. Immediately get it stuck on my earring. So you can wear it just around your neck like that. Pop it up like that. See, and it's long enough that it's not going to gape in the back, but it can still be under the collar of the jacket. And what I probably will do will be to wear the, pair this with the, uh, with a hat that I knit that matches this yarn. My, it does not like my industrial piercing. But yeah, but it's nice and warm. It's nice and baggy. So I don't feel like my throat's constricted and like I'm being choked or anything. But, yep. I really, I really like it. That is my tutorial on my basic beginner's loom knit cowl that's not industrial piercing friendly but I hope you like the tutorial and hope you have a good day